Hey YouTube, what's going on? This is Cheeseboy628 here today giving you week 2 of season 5 of the NPL season. So, what did I say? Did I say week 2, season 5 of the NPL season? Okay, redundantly redundant man over here. Anyway, what's going on here is this week we are facing the Boston Bee Doof. So, let's, let's give a little uh, history of what just happened the past week. So... We're just going to go to standings real quick here, and um, as you can tell, I'm doing great in my division. Um, last place, represent. Shout out, to, uh, shout out to San Antonio Swamperts for being the only one in our division that won last week. <laughs> but uh, hopefully that changes this week, uh, and by change, I mean in my favor, and everyone else can lose. I don't care. Uh, anyway. Uh, so we, we have some work to do. Some people already have a couple wins um, on their streak, so look at them go. But yeah, I had a 3-0 loss against the uh, Arizona Carvanas last week. And so that puts me at a minus 3. I'm not far behind from the others, but uh, yeah, clearly have some work to do. So Boston Bidoofs are the people I'm facing. They had a very narrow 1-0 victory. And um, it basically came down to a berry resist, but even then it looked like his last mod would have lived anyway. Anyway, I gave a uh, short analysis in my head of what I think that battle was, and it was simply he got the upper hand just from a slight misplay of the opponents, and then from there he just had more mods to exchange, I think. It wasn't like, he made some plays, sure, but for the most part it was just he ended up having a choosing a better matchup like he just chose the right mons and sets versus the opponent um and i mean in a sense you can argue that just that's what this whole league is but um i hope you know what i mean uh so going on from here um he s seems to play fairly similar to how i do where uh he has fairly standard sets and just plays as you would play a normal showdown battle as opposed to just playing the safest option and just having optimal sets. Unfortunately, not everyone can be Jolt, but um, we're, we're aspiring to be there one day. Nonetheless, um, I was hypothesizing a little bit about what mons I could pick for this team that I'll be facing him with. And um, the first mons that came to mind for me were Tyranitar and uh, Latias. And so I'll give my rationales for that. Um, so the main thing is I need, I'm going to switch this to, um, to the Boston Bidoofs now so I can look at his team and what to counter with. So the reason is because Lando, I was like, okay, there's, anyway, um, so my idea with that was Latias because I really, if you're looking at my team, I don't see anything else that could um, really be ideal to bring HP Ice against. Um, cause everything else either gets slammed by Earthquake or like just gets U-turned on. So I just don't think it's a good idea for anything else other than Latias to, um, be a little secretive with. The item I'm going to use for it, don't know yet. Um, but, uh, that's why we're here today. We're gonna work on this. Um, so he has some interesting mods for sure. Also, uh, the reason I thought instantly about Tyranitar is he doesn't really, he doesn't have great mods for it, like sure Dublin and Secret Sword, Sacred Sword, but um, I can crunch him and it'll take a ton of damage from that. Um, but uh, yeah, he just doesn't have a lot for that, but what I was thinking for sure with him, uh, with Tyranitar, is I'm going to be running Stealth Rock. Pursuit and Stone Edge. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure out Lando's speed. Um, where if it was to run, no, I don't want this. Can you stop? Okay. Um, if we're to run max speed, Jolly. 309 hits 309. So I need 310. If I am to run said Kieran Black, which I probably will. Um, 309, yeah, can't outspeed it without a plus speed nature, but that's perfectly fine. I don't know what I'm going to run minus in yet, but I'll do minus speed up for now, and we'll give it 310. So that's fun. Um, 
Yeah, let's see here. So if he's naive and he only has 32 Spatak investment, that Earth Power easily to a Chaos. Uh, we just need to see what mons do I particularly particularly want to kill. It'd be cool to hazard stack. I mean, if he does end up getting hazards up, he would have them from Lando and Levani. And that's it. I don't think anything else can run any kind of hazard. So that's where he's limited because if he wants to put hazards up, he's going to have to bring Lando if he wants residual hazards. Um, so, yeah, that's worth noting. So, for now at least, I'm probably going to put Clef. Ooh! What? what am okay. Can we talk about this for a second? Not only do I put in the Lando slot, but in his item slot, I put Fluff. Okay. Um, no, we want Clef key. Probably gonna give it leftovers, cause defensive. Um, I mean, I could run Toxic Orb if I wanted to be edgy, and I kind of want to be edgy. Who doesn't want to be edgy? Am I right? Um, so we'll think about it. Prankster, probably Thunder Wave because we're scum. Probably Spikes. Um, do we want Dazzle? Do we want the Dazzle? Or do we want Foul Play? Foul Play could be really good. I would be down for the Foul for the foul play. So probably gonna run Blastoise. I think I have to run regular first. Cause sometimes it just makes you start out with it when you, it's weird. Um, Blastoise tonight because that's a thing. Um, probably Rapid Spin and then probably Dark Pulse and then Sklad maybe, I don't know right now. Um, that doesn't matter. <laughs> I want to run Calm Mind. I want to run Shadow Ball. And I just need to think the rest of his mods. Because what I'm thinking now is Klefki being Rocky Helmet. Oh, that is that is not a Rocky Helmet. That never mind. Um, because. Because, because, if I'm to use Clef Key against him, and probably run Magnet Rise, then I'll be able to take on his Beedrill exceptionally well, especially if I get Rocks up. Which I have Rocks on my man T-Tar here. Um, so it's interesting. It's very interesting right now because Beedrill is a scary mon against my team. Talonflame can take it 1v1, but obviously that can only do so much. Kiram is bulky enough to take a hit from it. But just Rocky Helmet could be really nice for that residual. I know that stuff angers me when I try. And then I could um, handle Halucha fairly well against it. And Psyshock versus Ice Beam might be the better option at times. Let's say Gudra's Choice Banded for a second. Ice Beam versus Psyshock. Psyshock does more if it's just max HP. For now, I'm going to put Psyshock. I need 310 speed. I don't know if I need to run. Nope, I don't even need to run a plus speed nature. Tout speed Lando. So that's kind of cool. Um, we can run modest to max attack. And a little bit of HP investment. So this is what the team's looking like right now. Has room for improvement, but I'm liking it. I'm going to do a a few adjustments maybe and then I'm going to send the team over and I'm going to battle him in the next couple of days so thanks for watching guys stay tuned for the battle
Alright, here we are. Here is the Wi-Fi battle and we are ready with said replay. So, looking at the mods that he has, he didn't bring Gudra as you may have seen that I was trying to prepare for, but I was preparing for a good amount of his stuff and my Kiram set should be good for a lot of his stuff. I was speed creeping that Landorus and you may or may not see how speed creeping the Landorus plays into account, especially since he has Lee Vanny, as I didn't exactly account for its speed tier, which is one speed well, one speed point higher than Landorus's, so uh, technically if he does have a plus speed nature on his Levani, it will outspeed my Kiram and that could pose problems, but we'll see how that goes as we get into the battle here. So since he does have the Levani, I do have to consider that he might go for Sticky Web, and while uh, I don't think I have anything that actually removes hazards this game because I just have the Taunter being my uh, Talonflame here, which is a special defensive set. And so here I don't expect him to particularly stay in, however I do expect the Sash. But I am just going to go for the Willow first turn. It is a nice middleman play because it'll either break his Sash and then I can just take him out or I will be able to burn something on the switch. And so he does bring in his Berry Manilo as it is his good old Mandibuz, and I'm going to switch out immediately into my Clef Key because it's going to wall anything he has to offer, and yeah, there's nothing else he could really do to me. So he goes for the U-turn, and as you may have seen from my team builder, I do have Rocky Helmet, so with him being burned, and with me quad resisting that U-turn from a Mandibuz, it's going to do a ton of damage to him, so that's pretty great. So going in, he brings in his Vapor, uh, not his Vaporeon, his Landorus actually. He turns out to be a Sash, a Sash variant. I did not know this at the time, but he says it in his version. Uh, you definitely should check out his channel, by the way. Links in the description. But I go for the Magnet Rise. Um, turns out he just goes for the Earthquake right away. I was kind of expecting just Rocks, but just Magnet Rising in case he goes for EQ um, eventually. But yeah, he just went straight for it, interestingly enough. But I get a spike up, and interestingly, considering he's a Sash variant, he still goes for the U-turn. And I was just surprised in general why he went for U-turn instead of just switching out. Because if he just remembered that had Rocky Helmet, that he wouldn't want to take that extra damage. So my guess is that he forgot. He said he wasn't sure what he was thinking. But either way, he brings in his Squeegee Cat, the Vaporeon. And Vaporeon is an interesting situation for me in general. Now, um, that's actually the one Mon I feel super comfortable bringing Kirim B on. Because chances are he only has Scald. And even though I'm minus Spideff Nature with my mixed set, I am able to take one Scald under a sub. So, two will knock it out, but the point is I want to come in on this thing as easily as possible, and then that way I'll be able to have a sub and then start decimating his team as I have the uh, Fusion Bolt with the Zap Plate boosted Fusion Bolt. So it'll definitely be a guaranteed 2 KO on his Vapor and no matter his set. Now here's the thing, I was legitimately waiting to bring in Kiram B because I was really anticipating uh, a burn at some point with the Scald. So I was like, yep, yep, it's about to happen. And now that I got my burn hacks out of the way, I think now it's safe to switch into my Kiram B. So that's exactly what I do. By the way, if you guys get the references for my names, please let me know because like, I, I think they're pretty ingenious. Other than Jingles, Jingles is just kind of making fun of Klefki's decks entry but uh either way we bring in the kirin b actually very safely here because he doesn't even go for the skulls he just goes for the heal bell so this is a perfect situation for me and so i get to set up a sub absolutely for free here and we get to see what he wants to bring in slash wants to go for with his vaporeon turns out it does not have roar as he tells me later i'm not 100 percent sure on this yet and maybe he just wants to switch out onto a fusion bolt Either way, I get to substitute here. So, like I said, uh, Levani has base 92 speed, and I only speed creep max speed 91s. But, um, turns out he's not max speed plus speed nature, because I am able to outspeed him with the ice beam. So, not sure what he was doing there. Maybe he automatic. Maybe he is a plus attack nature, I'm guessing. That's the only guess I have, because considering he's Sash, he probably has max speed and attack. So now he brings in his dub blade. Turns out he has the EVs to survive two earth powers. Um, I think, yeah, to survive two earth powers if spikes weren't up. But since spikes are up, his whole plan there is unfortunately ruined. He says the spadef drop didn't matter. I'm wondering though, because it's really close, but he said it and I'll take his word for it. 
I think I have 32 special attack EVs invested. Either way, I get the earth power off, and um, now he breaks my sub. But here, I know, or at least I have a hunch, that he is too scared to switch out, because if I go for a sub again, it's just another Mon dies, and another one bites the dust, as Queen would say. So, yeah, the Dub Blade dies. I mean, if he brought in Halucha, he would have a ton of momentum, but it was really risky. Or if he brought in Landorus, but actually, since I outspeed that, uh, with my speed creeping, speed creeping, that doesn't really matter. Here I bring in the Talonflame because I imagine I can take any move he has barring his Stone Edge or Rock Slide. And if he goes for a sub, I can just Brave Bird kill that because of my priority uh, Gale Wings. So I'm going to go for that. And so uh, barring he has the Rock type move, I am going to uh, handle his Halucha. Well, it turns out that he's actually Expert Belt. I had no idea what his set was going to be. Halucha apparently has some kind of variation to it. And... Uh, yeah, he just goes for the rock slide that is going to connect and therefore definitely take out my talon flame Even if I was max HP max defense for crying out loud considering Halucha plus four times effective plus expert belt so Here I'm certainly free to go into my Latias at this point. He definitely doesn't know what my set is He would he said he was anticipating me being choice considering the situation especially since I have my coverage move of ice beam, but um yeah, I just go straight for it. I'm max attack modest, and so this is going to take him out because I get the critical hit. I imagine that mattered to an extent, he says. It doesn't matter, um, considering I would have taken him out next turn. However, at least giving him the opportunity to switch out could have been nice. But yeah, he brings in Vaporeon here, and the thing is, I want Latias to have decent health in the case that I do need to 1v1 Halucha. Just in case. So here though, I am going to sack off Jingles. Um, this is a pretty good situation for me, I'd say. Because now, I mean, if I barely live, I get off a spike or a T-wave. If not, uh, Clef Key just goes down. And then, uh, I guess get another free switch into the Bio Lizard, Kiram B itself. I imagine that was really close for how much health um, would have killed me via burn. I imagine if I had just a couple more HP, I probably would have lived that and then could have gotten off a spike or a T wave. Not that it particularly matters because now I get to bring in the beast itself once again. So I get to sub down. I think I have four mons left now. I think he might have four as well. Not sure at this point. I'm just, I'm just playing it by what I'm seeing here. It's been a week and a half, I think, since we had this battle. Either way, he goes for the skull here. Does not break my sub. So I'm in a really good position because, um, yeah, Fusion Bolt is definitely going to 2-it KO him at this point. And so it depends on what he wants to do in order to uh, counteract that situation. But there's not much he can do is the thing. So go for the Fusion Bolt does a ton of damage to that, that Vaporeon. I imagine it kind of looks like it has at least some defense investment. But um, either way, like I said, it's going to be a guaranteed 2-it KO no matter the situation. So it goes for the Scald once again, breaking my sub, but uh, now I get a free sub once again with my Bio Lizard, good old KB. And so, up to him what he wants to do, I do get a free sub here though. So he is going to switch out right away. He switches into Landorus T, I believe, as uh, he said his reasoning was to get the uh, Intimidate on me, that way my Fusion Bolt wouldn't do as much, but his Vaporeon is pretty low, plus spikes are up, so it's probably not too good for him. But uh, like I said, I do speed creep this Landorus if it is Jolly, and so that Ice Beam, I mean, well, the Jolly or Adamant, I'm going to outspeed unless he's Scarf. So, yep, I am able to take him out with that Ice Beam quite easily, and he's going to go down. So now I believe he brings in his Halucha. Because this is his last real chance to get enough damage on me that um, hopefully he'll be able to break my sub by going for the U-turn and then coming back in and trying to do as much damage to my team as possible. If his U-turn did happen to break my sub, I would just sack KB and then bring in Latios and then kind of just win with Psy Shock. But the U-turn does not break my sub, nor did it really have a chance to. It didn't unless it was a crit. So I just go for the Ice Beam here. Totally fine. And I did calcs afterwards, and um, not that it really mattered whether I went for Fusion Bolt or Ice Beam at the end on Halucha, but uh, I just decided to go for the Ice Beam considering I'm not minus one uh, special attack as opposed to minus one attack that I have currently. 
So yeah, he brings in the beast for my friends, and uh, yeah, he goes for the rock slide. He attempts to flinch me through the sub. Unfortunately, that does not work for him today. No infiltrator for you. But uh, yeah, let's see how much this ice beam does, if it does happen to take him out. And uh, mm, yep, no Yachi today, as <laughs> considering I told you that he has expert belt. But yeah, he was he was saying in his video as he was pretty stoked that Halucha 1v1 to Talonflame Technically, I mean it was behind a sub, but what can you do? I mean he had the coverage for it. So uh, Yeah, I there was a pretty good battle. It turns out KB got five of the kills I believe uh, when I did the stats afterwards and so that's a 4-0 victory in my favor now it gives me a positive differential and a one in one record so next week we are going to face the st louis reshirams maddie brolic gonna be super intense and yeah i'm stoked for the rest of the season guys hope you are too thank you all for watching like comment seven until later peace